Well, here we are again, beginning our new minor prophetic book study. Gleanings from the minor prophets, uh, the book of Amos. Basically, uh, today what we're going to do is we're simply going to just uh, look at an introduction. It's going to be, you know, in the form of a broad um, overview. Just some little advice as we continue in. Um, the vein of minor prophets. As you continue to do your biblical research, as you continue to do your extra biblical research, you're going to find that you um, are going to have a lot of information, a plethora of information. You've already seen that already in the way that we're approaching our book studies, but just be careful with all the information that you find. Um, if you're not careful, as I've always said, you're going to find yourself in what I call information overload. Please don't blow the brain circuits. Don't blow the brain circuits. Take your time. Pause the video if you need to. Step away. Get you a snack. Get you some hot tea or some coffee. Come back to the study. That's the beauty of it being recorded. You can pause and come back. So take your time. You know, we're not punching a time clock. We're not in a hurry. We're not in a rush. We're going to study the Word of God together slowly and methodically, getting all that we can out of it. So, you know, take your time with it. Go slow and steady. I believe I've read somewhere that slow and steady wins, wins the race. Well, we'll see. Before we you know, dive right into the book of Amos. I, I want to do just what I just said, a, a brief overview. There's some things to remember as we overview the book of Amos. Many of the minor prophetic books, they're going to sound like a broken record. I've already mentioned that to you in, in previous uh, videos. But many of the minor prophets contains a lot of the same thematic information. For example, we see a common theme running through uh, most of the minor and some of the major prophetic books, the th major themes of God's judgment, then God's restoration or God's promise of blessing. So we see that theme, God's punishment, God promising to bless or God blessing. That is a theme that runs throughout the minor prophetic books and some of the major prophetic books. We see that theme in the Old Testament. God uh, judging his people judging the, 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 the world at the time, and then on the other side of that, usually if the people will, will um, stop what he's telling them to stop doing, usually stop sinning, stop worshiping false idols, um, then, then he promises on the other side of that blessing and restoration. We see that theme. So we, we know that when we approach the book of Amos. Uh, primarily, you know, some of the other themes that we see in the prophetic books is God is holy, um, he is compassionate, he is slow to anger, but he will not tolerate rebellion. God will not tolerate sin. You know, even though God is compassionate, even though God is long-suffering, slow to anger, he will not hesitate. He will not hesitate to wield righteous, fierce, un hindered judgment he will the wrath of his wrath will pour out on all people now we're going to see that in the end times when we get to the book of revelation when we get to the eschatological studying of the book of revelation the end times we see that god's wrath is coming and we see it in the old testament occurring and we see it prophetically even in our future god judging the entire world now another thing we want to think about as we continue working through a minor prophetic book is our primary purpose um, as we study is to ferret out, to, to dig out any applications that we can for Christian living. Well, we know that making proper application begins with proper um, understanding, begins with proper context, uh, begins uh, with proper interpretation. So to achieve proper application, we're going to have to study our biblical audience. We're going to have to get into biblical history. I know a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like history in general. But when it comes to studying the Bible, we just want to read it. We don't want to have to dig. We don't want to have to research. But guess what? We're going to have to. 
to understand it. Now, the Holy Spirit does teach us certain things as we read it. Yes, I understand that. The Word is Holy Spirit given. It is Holy Spirit interpreted in our lives. But we sometimes have to do research. We have to dig deeper than the surface. And that's what I want to, you know, get across to you. We're going to, our purpose is not necessarily to find everything that we can because that's basically going to be impossible as we are studying together because we can't do it we can't draw Amos out forever, but we just are looking for those applications if there are any that we can make. In order to make proper application, we first need to make proper interpretation, and that includes studying the context, the background, the, the, the audience to which it was intended, which it was given. But we can make many applications after that. Context is key. So let's pray, and we'll just get into a brief overview of Amos. You ready to pray? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time together. Continue to teach us through your word. Lord, often it's daunting. Our other things are pulling at us for our time. But Lord, I pray that you give us, give us the desire in our hearts and our minds to carve out time to study your word together. Father, bless us as we study it. We know you will. You said it, your word will not return void, that it will accomplish that which you send it forth to accomplish. It will do that, Lord, and we trust that. We lean into that. Teach us. Break us down, remold, remake us, Father, in the, more in the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for meeting us around your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, here's some historical context, uh, a little bit of an overview. Now, it's estimated, depends on who you study, depends on how many resources you go to, but it's estimated that Amos was written in the 8th century sometime around 750 B.C. Now, we know this because of the hints within the Word of God. This is within the Word of God, there are hints. Within the book of Amos, there are hints as to when the book was written, 8th century, sometime around 750 B.C. Hint number one, Amos chapter 1, verse 1. Look at that. The words of Amos, one of the shepherds of Tekoa, the vision he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam, this is Jeroboam the second son of Joash, was king of Israel. So we have clues as to when this book was written. Now the first clue, the first hint is, is two years before the earthquake. That's a hint. The second hint that we have, when Uzziah was king of Judah, the third hint. When Jeroboam, the second son of Joash, was king of Israel. And then hint number four, we have to look in chapter 5, verse 27. If you want to turn over there and look, chapter 5, verse 27 is another hint as to when the book was written. Let me get there, 5, 27. Therefore, I will send you into exile. I will send you into exile beyond Damascus says the Lord, whose name is God Almighty. Those are all hints. Look at the hints again. Hint number one in chapter one, verse one. Two years before the earthquake. That raises some more questions. Hint number two, when Uzziah was king of Judah. Hint three, when Jeroboam the second son of Joash was king of Israel. And hint number four in chapter five, verse 27, therefore I will send you into exile beyond Damascus. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to occur. This, these are hints as to when the book was written, when Amos was, when he gave this prophet, when, when God gave him, Amos, the prophetic word to speak. It wasn't Amos' words. It was God's word through Amos. Well, the earthquake. Again, like I said, that raises some more questions. There's only one other place in Scripture that this particular earthquake is mentioned. That's in Zechariah chapter 14. Verse 5b. You can read all of verse 5, but verse 5b is the section that mentions this particular earthquake. Zechariah 14, 5b. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. That's a hint. Now, this is all we know biblically about this particular earthquake. Here in Amos, Zechariah mentions it in Zechariah 14, 5b. This is all that we know of the earthquake. We know that the earthquake written in Amos was a literal 
earthquake. We also know if we examine the context more closely in the book of Zechariah that the earthquake he mentioned, he mentioned it as a metaphor. It was the earthquake was the worst in biblical history, according to Zechariah, because he used it metaphorically to represent the great and final judgment day of the Lord. The great final judgment day of the Lord will be unlike anything in all history. So Amos mentions the earthquake during uh, two years. Let me see. Uh, Israel, when Uzziah was the, the vision he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake when Uzziah was king of Judah and when Jeroboam II was king of Israel. So that is a literal. Zechariah mentions it exactly, but Zechariah uses it metaphorically to talk about the future day of the Lord, which is going to be horrible. The great judgment day of the Lord is going to be horrible, unlike anything in history. So we know that the earthquake that Amos is talking about, that he mentioned, was bad. It was a doozy. It was huge. It was awful. We are confident in the dating of Amos because Uzziah, king of Judah, during the lifetime, during the time frame of Amos. Jeroboam II was king during Amos's lifetime within that time frame. We're confident of the dating of Amos because the Assyrian captivity hasn't did it didn't happen yet when Amos wrote about it. It was coming. It was looming. We are confident in our dating of uh, of the writing of Amos, eighth century, seven hundred and fifty B.C. Now we know we can go a, a few years before that, a few years after that. The, this is how biblical time frames work. They're fluid. They stay fluid. They have to. Now I want us to think about how we are going to make it through nine chapters of Amos. Well, it's like this right here. This this gallon of water. Now I am in my fifties. I weigh about 163 pounds. Maybe 165 pounds fully clothed and drenched in water. I am at my age, at my weight, at my perceived hope, good help coming. I, I need to drink this whole thing of water each day. Do you know how daunting that is for me? I don't like to drink water. I put those flavor drops in and that helps a little bit, but I don't like drinking water. So this is daunting to me to think that every day I have I need for my optimum help to drink this much water. How do I do it? I do it one sip at a time, one mouthful at a time. Sometimes I guzzle it. I'm trying to get past it. You've ever gone to have a colonoscopy? Hello? and you have to drink all that stuff or take all those pills, hello, it's like that. One gulp at a time, one mouthful at a time, one pill at a time. So that's how we're going to study the book of Amos. Nine chapters is chunk at a time. So a great way to think of an overview of the book of Amos is in sections. I want us to think in sections as we begin our study in Amos. And I'm, I'm going to give you three sections. Now, these are broad sections. And as we study the book, chapter by chapter, or a couple of chapters at a time, we're going to get more minute in our divisions. But right now, we just want to think of three broad overviews. So Amos chapters 1 and 2, God's message to the nations and Israel. So that's a section. We One drink at a time. One, one sip at a time of the gallon. Amos chapters 1 and 2, God's message to the nations and Israel. Broad section number 2, chapters Amos chapters 3 through 6, God's message to Israel and her leaders. And then the last broad section, Amos chapters 7 through 9, the visions of Amos. Let me give you those, sec those sections again. Now, don't set them in stone. These are broad, okay? Section 1, Amos chapters 1 and 2, God's message to the nations and Israel. Section 2, Amos chapters 3 through 6, God's message to Israel 
and her leaders. And then Amos chapters 7 through 9, the visions of Amos. So those are three broad sections. Remember, we drink this entire gallon, one sip at a time. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you get ready for a colonoscopy? One step at a time. Amos can be thought of or thought through containing two basic themes. We've already talked about them, but here's two basic themes throughout the book of Amos, nine chapters. God's pending judgment and God's promised blessing. Those are the two broad, two major themes, two main themes in Amos, all nine chapters. God's pending judgment and God's promised blessing. Remember, these two themes are common throughout the Old Testament. God's judgment and God's pending promise. Or sometimes God gives his prom fulfills his promise immediately. Often it's a future promise. And it's still to happen for Israel because God's promises haven't all been uh, answered for Israel. We'll see that at the end time. When all of Israel is restored completely, we'll see that coming. It's still coming. It's still a prophecy to be fulfilled. Well, here's our homework for next week. That's all I want to go over this week. But our homework for next week, now remember, these homework questions, they guide our study. The questions are given to you in advance, a week in advance. You have a week to, to think about them, to, to, to sort through them, to answer them, because they are setting us up for our outline of the study next week. I'll follow that as an outline. So the homework questions are important, but if you don't do them, that's fine. They're for your benefit. Um, I'm going to do my, do my teaching as I always do, but they're for your benefit and they help us keep our train of thought on the track. We don't get derailed. So here's some homework thoughts, some homework questions for next week. Read the entire book of Amos, all nine chapters in one setting. Don't cheat. I've read the book of Amos today, alone today, twice. Don't cheat. Read the entire book of Amos in one setting. Why? Because it's one book. It's one prophecy as a whole. We, then we study it section by section, but we need to understand it as a whole. It goes together perfectly. That's your first assignment. Read the entire book of Amos in one sitting. Don't cheat. And then here are the questions. One, from chapters one and two, what eight nations was God directing his judgment toward? Question one. From chapters 1 and 2, what eight nations was God directing his judgment toward? Provide scripture reference. Very simple. Two, after you list the eight nations, what were the sins that each nation committed? God mentioned eight sins through Amos. Amos prophesied against eight nations. Each nation had specific sins. They're mentioned. List them. Eight nations under the judgment of God, and then he lists, he says specific sins to each nation. List those out, provide scripture references. Third question, after you list the sins, which nation committed the most? Which nation was documented within the book of Amos as committing the most? Now, we know it's, it's not all that they did sinful, sin-wise, but there are some mentioned. So, from chapters 1 and 2, what eight nations was God directing his judgment toward? Then after you list those eight, what were the specific sins that each nation committed? Provide scripture references. After you list the sins, which nation had the most? And then the last homework question, number four, do you notice anything interesting between the first six nations mentioned? Do you notice anything interesting between the first six nations mentioned? If so, share your thoughts. Now here's a hint. Think of them in equal sets of two. Three nations, three nations. Equal six, but think of them in sets of two. Three nations and three nations. Do you see anything interesting within these sets or between these sets? Do you notice anything interesting between the first six nations mentioned? If so, please share your thoughts. Think of them in equal parts. Three nations and three nations. Next week, we're gonna, 
I'm going to try my best to get through chapters one and two and answer the homework question. That's my goal. That's what I'm shooting for. That's what I hope to do. Um, if you um, have any questions about the questions, Joanna is pretty faithful of giving, sending out the emails with the questions in it or attached. So look for that if, if you missed the questions. But I think you can pause the video, rewind it, and look and find those questions again. Well, Amos, it's going to be a party up in here. I'm drinking my water. This is this is how much I've drank today. It's about what time is it? And it's about six ten p.m. all day. But I'm gonna get it down sip by sip. Well, I love y'all. Let's pray together. I trust y'all have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I trust to see you all Sunday in your places, ready to worship and be encouraged. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you for continuing in our hearts the hunger for your word. Lord, teach us. Teach us things that we may not have ever imagined we could learn. Give us the time. Allow us the time to pull away, to pull out of the busyness of our day and to just reflect on you, reflect through your word, think through this book of Amos and what so what do you want us to learn from? Lord, we all may learn something different, and that's the beauty of studying the book together. Thank you for our time. We know it's blessed because you told us, you promised us, I lean into as a pastor and Bible teacher that your word will not return void. Lord, I trust you. Lord, use it mightily in our lives. Use us this week to help someone else, to encourage someone, Father. Those around us that are hurting, who are struggling through life more than we, Lord, I pray that you use us as that beacon of light, Lord, in our homes, in our communities, to our neighbors, so that they may see Christ in us. Thank you for the privilege of serving. Thank you for the privilege of Bible study. We love you. We praise you, exalt you, we magnify you. In Christ's name, we pray and we agree together. Amen. Love y'all. See you Sunday, if not before.